Hey, I'm the How To Dad, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cool wine rack that's also a serving station. The only thing you need to build this with is a jigsaw and a driver. Trade it in your diamond hand for paper hands. Don't worry, you can make a bunch of these, sell them on Etsy, and get some of that YOLO back. All right, so it's February 2021. Stocks and Bitcoin are through the roof and we're about to hit a major crash. You're wondering what to do. You don't have any money because you lost it all in the recent GME trade and you're trying to figure out a way to distract your girlfriend from the mistakes that you've made. So you're gonna make a bunch of these, sell them on Etsy and get some of that YOLO back. All you're gonna need is a jigsaw, a driver, and a couple of hand tools. I will link some jigsaws and drivers in the description so you can go ahead and buy those and as well as the hinges that you're gonna need for this project. The plans for this project are available at beddeskplans.com go ahead and download them, make as much as ease as you want and get all that YOLO back. All right, here we go. All right, so yeah, what I'm gonna use for this, like I said, is my jigsaw and my driver. It, basically, this is, this is what I'm gonna be using as my drill. Uh, an important thing about your jigsaw is make sure you get a good jigsaw. I'm gonna link a couple in the description of the video um, so that you can choose one. Uh, Makita, Bosch, DeWalt, something like that. Like, don't, don't cheap out and get like a Ryobi or a, uh, a Black & Decker. Someone told me one something once and I, and I firmly believe it, which is buy your last tool first. That means buy the tool that's gonna last you a long time. You're gonna be really frustrated by a cheap tool and it's not gonna work the way that you want it to. And in this case, if this is gonna be the only tool, the only saw that you have, get a good one. Just go ahead, get a good one. And if you can afford the extra bit for a cordless, I would definitely recommend it. It's a pain in the, pain in the butt <laughs> to deal with a, with a uh, cord all the time. So if you can get a, a cordless one, I would, I would definitely recommend that. All right, so you're not gonna have to do that because you're gonna be smart when you go to the home store, you're gonna have them cut a piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood 24 by 36 on their um, panel saw for you. So we'll just pretend like I didn't use my, uh, my circular saw there. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna lay out my cuts on my piece. I'm gonna be careful to make sure that my long cuts go with the grain. So in the same line as the grain and, um, and my small, smaller cuts can go across the grain. And the reason you wanna do that is because your jigsaw will have a tendency to tear out the wood. That means it chips it a little bit. So if you cut with the grain, it chips less. Against the grain, it chips more. But uh, we'll show you some other ways of, of getting around that. But for now, um, I'm getting to lay this out and the next step will be to cut. All right, let's do it. So what I've got here is I've got a couple of off cuts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the blade of my jigsaw up with the line that I'm gonna cut. And I'm gonna bring the off cut right up beside it. It's very important that this side of your off cut is a perfectly straight line. So if you have a uh, factory edge that would work really great. Now I'm gonna bring the other off cut and I'm gonna bring it right up beside. And what that's gonna act is it's gonna act kind of like a rail so that I, I make sure that these cuts are perfect. I'm then gonna take a set of couple of clamps and I'm gonna clamp these into place. And I actually find if I, if I turn the saw around, I get more of a surface, more of an area along here that I can actually line that up with. So there, I'm pretty happy with that. And so I'm gonna start cutting. One thing you may wanna do to avoid tear out is you can try using the blue tape trick. Now I've already lined this up, so I don't have to worry about looking at the line because I've got these jigs in the way here to keep me from wandering off on my cut. It's actually a really nice cut. I'm impressed with uh, what, what you can do with a jigsaw, but it's gonna be a bit trickier when we do the angle cuts, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, and since you're gonna be making tons of these to try to get some of that YOLO back, you're gonna to wanna to make one of these. So now this is a jig. This is an actual jig, and this is a reusable jig. Now all I have to do, I put this down, line it up with my cut, clamp it into place, and just start cutting. It saves a lot of time, and you'll see a lot of people using this. Now when they say a jig, it's not what you're thinking about. That's a jig. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, so for this cut, I'm actually gonna have the, uh, the saw at an angle, so it's gonna be at 45 degrees for this cut. So make sure when you buy your jigsaw that you get one that can do, uh, it's called a miter instead of an angle cut. But see, that might actually be a bevel. I think it's a bevel, sorry. Make sure that your saw can do a bevel. When using your jig, you're gonna have to make sure because it's actually not gonna line up with your cut line when it's beveled like this. So what I do is I just, just gonna insert the saw into a cut that I've made halfway and then move the jig up to that and I'll clamp the jig into place. So 
So how about that actually for a uh, for a jigsaw cut? That is really good. It's actually a really good miter for just about any cut. Now I can see by looking at it that it's a little bit off of uh, off square, but uh, for our purposes, this will this will work actually really really well. I'm really happy with the way that that worked out. Very little tear it along along the edge. A nice crisp line. That's actually really really good, especially for a jigsaw. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, so I got all the pieces cut out. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the uh, hanger for the wine glasses. Now uh, I put some edge banding on the plywood just to finish it. I'm, and to do that, what you're gonna need to do is you need to borrow your wife's boyfriend's iron, um, set it to high, and then just put that edge banding right on there. Um, that'll make the uh, process uh, later on down the road a little bit easier because you won't be putting small little strips on there. You just have one big strip to cut through. Now the next thing we're gonna do to get this thing ready to go is I'm going to drill the spots where I want the wine glasses to be. I'm going to use an offcut underneath the workpiece uh, to drill through the workpiece into, into that offcut. The reason I'm going to do that is because I don't want to have any blowout underneath the hole. So if you put something underneath it and drill through it, it'll give that really nice finish. And you can come in with the jigsaw later and you can cut out those slots. All right, so I got that cut out. That was pretty easy. Now you saw that I used two off cuts, one on top and one on the bottom. And basically what that does is it stops the tear out from, from coming through, especially when you're cutting across the grain like that, you're gonna get a lot of tear out. So if you put something underneath that, it just kind of holds those wood fibers together and doesn't allow them to blow out. So anyway, that turned out, that turned out really great. And uh, now you can see why I put the edge banding on there first, because putting one big edge banding across there is a lot easier than all these little tiny ones. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the hinges on the door and on the bottom shelf. So this process is gonna be a bit tricky. If you have a router, it would be a lot easier, but you don't have a router, you only have a jigsaw and a drill. So we're gonna do this using chisels and, and a hammer. So you can go down to your local hardware store and get yourself a chisel for next to nothing and use your utility knife to help you along. And this is just exactly how you do it. Not very difficult. Score it out with your utility knife and then you're going to come in with your chisel and your hammer and you're gonna take a little away. Score a little bit out with your utility knife again and then and then chisel it away. Always checking your hinge along the way to make sure you haven't gone too deep. I find with this plywood, basically you go down one ply thickness, maybe it's two, anyway, we'll see. And uh, yeah, just sort of keep checking because you want your hinge to be nice and flush with the level of the shelf when you're done and that way your wine glasses and wine bottles aren't getting, aren't getting stuck to it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the edge banding on all the edges of the plywood that are gonna be showing. If you wanna do this, you can. You don't necessarily have to. I kinda like the exposed edge of the plywood, but for a nice finished, solid wood looking finish, you do wanna put the edge banding on. Then I'm gonna sand all the pieces using 120 grit sandpaper to get ready for finishing. All right, so I've got all my pieces sanded and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish them. Actually, before I finish them, I'm gonna clean up my station. It's really important. There's a lot of dust on my station, so I gotta clean it up and my, my pieces as well. You wanna get all the dust off that because it'll mess up your finish. All right, so I'm ready to finish and uh, you might be wondering what's the deal with the nails? Well, basically what I like to do is I like to sit and just think about how I'm gonna do it. I like to work out a plan in my head how I'm gonna do that. And for finishing, for instance, I'm going to first open the can and then I'm gonna start finishing using a brush. But what if somebody calls me in the middle? Well, I'll wear gloves so I can take the gloves off and then answer my phone. What if I wanna finish both sides at the same time? Well, what I've done is I've laid out some nails here so I can put the pieces right on the nails after I finish both sides. I can finish two sides, they can dry at the same time. I have to think about which side I'm gonna put down on the nails because I don't want the nail heads to show on the finished side. Once I have that all, all figured out, that's when I start finishing. I've got all the uh, all the finish on there. Now I'm going to start assembling, which is the most exciting part. So you get to see your creation come together. Now, where your pieces come together, you are going to want to put some glue, but because you put finish on there, the glue won't bond uh, very well. So uh, since you traded in your diamond hands for paper, you're going to have to use sandpaper to take off some of the finish on both of the pieces that are that are fitting together. Don't worry, we're going to put another coat of finish on when everything's assembled. 
the best part about finishing is that it means it's you're really close to being done. So I'm going to start assembling by putting the uh, shelf and the door together and then assembling the entire body. I'm going to hold everything together with glue, screws and finishing nails. Again, it's all using hand tools, nothing special. Uh, if, if I wasn't doing this for you, I'd be using a pneumatic nailer and I would probably use some dado joints, which you can't really do with a uh, with a jigsaw. Anyway, here we go. Let's get going. So I had a little bit of trouble driving a finishing nail straight through the spacer into the into the piece below. So I decided to actually use a pilot hole. That way I didn't wasn't bending the nails. I just drilled the pilot hole through the spacer and not into the piece below. And that way I was able to just get the nail right through the spacer into the piece below. Like I said, I'm used to using a pneumatic nailer, so I don't actually use a lot of finishing nails and a hammer. So it was a bit trickier than I expected. Making sure I had glue on all the faces that stick together, I then drilled pilot holes to screw from behind so anything that's attaching to the back piece I just put a screw and then any place that you were gonna see the fastener I actually used a finishing nail I countersunk that finishing nail and later came back and filled that hole with some wood filler Now anywhere that I was screwing in blind, I was sure to measure the front of the assembly first before turning it over and screwing from the back, being sure to get into the plywood and not just having a screw coming out um, and kind of messing up the uh, finished product. Then I just reassembled the shelf and the door with the hinges, putting the screws back in the holes that were already there. All right, so it's together and it looks uh, looks pretty darn good. I really like this. So you have the wine bottles here, you put your wine glasses up on there, pour your wine drinker drinker um, now I was just kind of thinking it would be really cool if I maybe like just put a little magnet like right here and maybe another one here so that it would just hold this into place so there's a bit of a detent like kind of clicks in there you know you could put a stop on either side to make sure that it stays up because the door will stay on its own like it there is um, enough friction in those in those hinges to keep that keep that door up but I think I'm gonna try that uh, that magnet trick all right here we go let's try it all right, so I really like how that worked out. So now I've got a magnet on this side and a magnet here. So now when the door goes up and finds that magnet, it just sits there. It's kind of like a little latch. So the only thing I really have left to do is the final finishing. So I'm gonna fill those nail holes with uh, some wood filler and then I'm gonna sand the entire thing with uh, lightly with some 220 grit sandpaper and then one more coat of finish on there. And we should be good to go. And then you just take some really nice pictures of it, throw it up on Etsy and get your YOLO back. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I just got I just got a notification on my phone that uh, someone's bought a set of the plans so uh, yeah so it looks like someone's bought the bin master plans and it was Nick R from Georgia all right cool thanks Nick I really appreciate it when you finish it make sure you send pictures to me so that I can feature it maybe in a future video um, one thing that really is cool about uh, selling plans and doing a project and getting plans sold at the same time is that it kind of just put some wind in my sails. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nick. Next thing I did was I installed it into the house. I just found where I wanted it to be, made sure it was level. I located the studs. You know, you really want to screw this into a stud. You don't want it just going into the drywall because it'll fall right off the wall and you have broken glass and wine all over your floor and nobody's going to be happy with that. I really like the function of this and how it looks. It looks really great. And then when you want to serve a glass of wine, just go ahead and open it up, put your wine glass down and start pouring into it frees up some counter space and it's a really great way to display your wine and your wine glasses. All right, so that turned out really good. I'm really happy with that. I see that you watched the video the whole way through. So go ahead and hit that like button, maybe subscribe, hit that ding -a thing, the notification bell. Not really sure what that does. Head to beddeskplans.com to get yourself a set of plans for, for this project. So probably the most common comment that I get from people is that they don't have the space or the tools in order to make something. I just wanted to show you, you can, you can start woodworking just about anywhere. Take a look at my buddy, Billy here. He's taken his small storage closet in his apartment and turned it into a woodworking shop. He's got a couple of tools 
in there that he's built up over time. And just like you, you'll be able to build up your skills and your tool set over time and be great at woodworking before you know it. I made a bit of a mistake lately where I uh, posted my 3D model for the Honda Element cup holder that I sell at my Etsy store on Thingiverse. I made that available to people who have 3D printers themselves that want to print off one for their own Honda Element. Somebody's gone on there, taken my model, changed it a little bit, and is now selling it themselves. And they're totally undercutting me and it just kind of sucks. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Has anyone ever taken something of yours, stolen an idea or design of yours, and tried to claim it as their own? How did it make you feel? What did you do about it? Let me know in the comments. Contact me on Instagram. I'm at the How To Dad. If you have any advice for me, I'd love to hear it. And while you're on Instagram, check out Jack and Jenny's shop. They have this really cool hype board that's a rocket. It really looks like the GME emoji. I really, really like it. So yeah, go ahead, follow me on Instagram. I'm at the How To Dad, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Keep dancing with the devil, but he doesn't love it.